Hello, my name's Dave Kellaway and I want to share a few memories of Livia Maita with you for a few minutes. This is because we're trying to raise funds to publish his book, The History of the Fourth International in English. I'm collaborating on that project and we hope that um, by publicising uh, his life a little bit through these videos we can encourage people to contribute to this fund. Now, I worked with Livio for five and a half years in the early 80s when uh, the Super Bureau of the Fourth International settled in Paris. This was after the 11th World Congress, and it, it was decided that we'd try and bring all the leading comrades in many of the sections to Paris to collaborate together and in that way help to build the international. So we had people like, uh, obviously, Livio, Ernest Mandel, um, Charles Houdry from Switzerland, Miguel Romero from Spain, Janet Abel, uh, and um, Daniel Ben Said, the late Daniel Ben Said. Um, and that bureau lasted five or six years, then the, the idea was changed. Now, as a political leader, Livia was actually much more succinct and to the point, generally more cautious about general political trends and events than his great collaborator, Ernest Mandel. He would often joke about Ernest's tendency to over, be over-optimistic. He also wrote in a no-nonsense, very clear style. He had a lot less uh, embellishments and long subordinate clauses than some of the other writers from the Bureau. And therefore I was always quite happy to translate Ernest, Ernest uh, sorry, Livio, because he was uh, quite straightforward to translate, it wouldn't take too long. He could be quite independent. Uh, although he was a member of the International Majority on the Bureau, he did have his own position on many things, and in particular on the question of Afghanistan, which was a big topic at the time. After the Russians invaded Afghanistan, he had a position which said we shouldn't call for the immediate withdrawal of Russian troops, which was, of course, the position that the majority adopted. And he had a as well as this, Livio had a better sense of humour than many people, I think, in the Bureau. Uh, I always remember the, a meeting, an international meeting, where Tarig Ali um, was attending as well. And Livio was given a minority report to Afghanistan, which Tarig opposed. And he suddenly got a, a, a throg in his throat, he had a dry throat. And Tarig brought a glass of water for him. And uh, Livio, on taking a first sip, suddenly made a big uh, theatrical play of, as though he was being poisoned. It's quite funny at the time. I knew him anyway, not just as a politician, as a political leader, but also as a friend. He was my flatmate during my first months in Paris when uh, he made me very welcome. We maintained a social relationship and we went often had parties or dinners together. This picture that you can see now was of a, a dinner organised by Linda, who's sitting there with Tom at the end, and Pierre at their house, and we can see John Bars and myself and Carmela and Livio in the middle. Uh, we would also go to films and, and many cheap restaurants in Paris on a regular basis. Uh, I don't know whether it was because he was young during the war or because of his internment during the war, but he was always a very fast eater. He'd always be the first one to finish before anybody else. But like any uh, Italian, he enjoyed eating together and socialising with friends. And of course, he was a great football fan. Uh, we used to play regularly on Saturdays at the Parc de Sceaux in uh, the south of Paris. Here you can see him, as any good Italian superbly turned out, playing his stopper role. He would play in defence, because by that time he was already 60, and he was uh, fairly effective, but not very quick. But I remember great fun, every Saturday we'd go down and he, he would often be there when it was quite icy or frosty and nobody else would pretend except myself and him. But he, we often used to watch the football on TV together and um, I always remember his support for the beloved French team with Tigana, Gires and Platini, the great team of the 80s in the uh, World Cup at the time. And I never saw as angry, even politically, uh, any time as when we were watching the game in the semi-final when France was playing West Germany at the time. And there was a famous 
Batistón incident. And this was the famous attack with Batistón on goal and the German uh, keeper, Schumacher, comes out very strongly and basically takes out Batistón. He goes off quite badly injured. And uh, many French people still remember this with great uh, anger uh, because obviously it, it was a decisive moment in the game and it, and it, it meant that West Germany won. Livio was very angry about that. He never forgot that, I don't think. But um, he was also a, a man of great culture, Livio. He loved his music. He would always listen to classical music when he was uh, writing or reading. And his great love was Mozart. To the extent that I remember we all went to see Amadeus, the famous uh, play or film by Peter Schaffer, made into a film by Marlis Forman later. And we went to see it and we all enjoyed it, but he was quite critical. He didn't like it at all because he thought it trivialised the great man Mozart. So he was a great man. But he was also very much a person who was down to earth. He could talk to anybody. I remember Carmela's mum and dad coming to Paris and... Um, Carmelo's mum and dad, ordinary people, never had any educated any education, um, not book people at all. But he was able to maintain a good conversation and be very uh, nice to them when he came round to eat with us all together. Uh, and then the last time I saw him was um, a few years before his death, and he had come to London for a meeting. At that time, I hadn't been very active for a while politically. So, but he made the effort of looking me up, finding my number from the comrades, and coming to see me and have a lunch with me. And I often think of those days back in the 80s, and I, I, do, I do miss him, I think. I remember him as a great man, really. And um, there's one lesson I would take from Livio's life and his way of acting, was that it's very important not to live and sleep politics all the time. You need to be interested in all things human, culture, sport, friendship, eating together. That's the only way we can really survive long term as political activists. We need more Livios, basically. Thank you for listening.